is Kat. Today I wanted to share a few of my 2022 favorite reads. I'm not going to share all of them because I just feel like that would be such a long video, but I did do a post on my bookstagram and I shared all my favorite reads there. So I'll include my Instagram down below if you want to check it out and see the full list of all the books that I really liked. Something else I was hoping to share in this book, let's just like put it all together. I wanted to share my 2023 reading goals so we can discuss that a little bit too. I do want to rapid fire through these a little bit because even though I'm not sharing all of them, I'm still sharing one, two, three, four. I can do math. I have five, okay, seven books. <laughs> so I'm sharing seven books total. I think it's just gonna be rapid fire. Some of my favorite things about these books, what really stood out to me. I might share a quote here and there and that's it. Let's just get into it. So I wanted to share some fiction and nonfiction favorites. I have two, uh, two nonfiction and five fiction. I just read a lot more fiction, so I feel like I needed to expand the amount I have under that list. It's not gonna be in any particular order. I'm not gonna rank these from like best to least or anything like that. I'm just gonna share them by when I read them during the year. So I'll go in that order. Okay, so let's jump on in to the books. Okay, so the first book on this list is The Secret Lives of Church Ladies by Disha Filia. It's a short story collection, which typically, it's not that I'm not a fan of short story. I just feel like I, I struggle to connect a bit with short stories because I, I want to like live in that world for a longer time. I want to be with those characters for longer. So it throws me off when we're just like switching to the next story because I want the other one to just like be longer. But this one was so good. And this is one that I, that made me realize like, oh, okay, maybe I could be a short story girly. And it's one that I really want to give a reread. Some of my favorites from this collection, let me look through. I need to look at the list. Okay, so some of my favorites, Not Daniel, Peach Cobbler, Snowfall. Snowfall is, I think, probably like my most favorite out of all of them. How to Make Love to a Physicist and When Eddie Levert Comes. Those definitely stood out to me when I was reading them. And the Snowfall one, I've reread re like multiple times. And it's so funny because today it's snowing. Uh, it's like the first first snow of the season pretty much. Whenever it snows, I think specifically of those characters because they're shoveling snow and they just like are miserable in the snow, but I freaking love this short story collection. If you're someone who doesn't typically like short story collections, I think you might really like this one. It says the nine stories in this collection feature four generations of characters grappling with who they want to be in the world. Caught as they are between the church's double standards and their own needs and passions. Talking about this is making me want to reread this one so bad. And I think I am going to do a reread of this one because it's just so damn good. And I read it in, I think, February. It was early uh, 2022, so it's been a while since I've been within these stories. Okay, so that's that one. Tea break. Isn't this mug so cute? My friend got it for me for my birthday. I'm prepared this time. I made a tea because I didn't realize how exhausting it is to just talk to a camera for however long. Okay, so up next we have Maud Martha by Gwendolyn Brooks. And can we just appreciate this cover and how stunning it is? It's so pretty. This is the Faber edition. And I think it was released for the like, it was an anniversary of when this was published. I actually got this book from the library when I read it the first time. And I was so sad that I had to drop it off at the library because I just wanted to like keep this book forever. This is one of those books when I was done reading it, I just wanted to like hug it because I loved it so much. And then for Christmas, my partner, he put this in front of me and I was like so shocked. I was not expecting it. And I'm just so happy that I own this now. It's so beautiful. Let's dive into what it's about though. So this book is pub was published published in 1953 and it takes place in Chicago and we're following Maud Martha throughout her life from like when she's really young to when she's older and she's married and we just follow her through her life. Nothing wild happens, nothing extraordinary happens, but you just grow to love Martha as a character and I just wanted to like be with her and follow her story through and I don't know I just it felt like catching up with an old friend because you would read and it'd be a certain period of her her life and then it would move on to like the next period of her life and you'd be like checking in on her again and seeing where she's at how she's doing what what's going on I can't I love this book and it's really hard for me to put into words how much I love this book but I also have a review on my Instagram if you want to check it out I think there's a few of these that I might have reviewed 
reviewed if you want to look at my instagram because i'm probably not going to dive that deep into all of them but even just like on the back it says what what am i to do with all of this life like yeah what are we to do oh we have a special guest we have a special guest now with us. She's gonna hang out there while we talk about books. I wanted to read my favorite quote from this book because it just, it always sticks with me and I love it. What she wanted was to donate to the world the good Maud Martha. That was the offering, the bit of art that could not come from any other. She would polish and hone that. I feel like that just perfectly encapsulate this book and how you're just following her, living her life and trying to be the best version of herself like we're all trying to do and this book is just like a special one. Like this is a gem of a book and I highly recommend checking this one out if you haven't. Uh, something else to know is Gwendolyn Brooks is a poet. So I swear poets who write novels, just like a whole other level. This one for some reason, I'm just like so attached to this one that it might be number one, but the rest of them I'm not ranking. So, but just keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah, that's Mon Martha. Next we have Dogs of Summer by Andrea Abreu. I mean the cover itself, obsessed i love this split i love these two colors together they look so good and the two girls in the front so cute but this book is about two girls who are growing up on the canary islands and they're 10 years old and it's pretty much just about the stuff that they get up to as kids they're growing up in the 2000s like the early aughts i think it's like 2004 2005 or so and we just follow them around and see what they get up to and i don't know i thought it was really good it's really raw i don't think that this is for everyone i think some people might not really like this one as much as I did or as other people might have, but it worked for me. What I really appreciated was the way Andrea like laid everything out and the format of everything. There's one chapter that has no punctuation marks whatsoever. And then I think there's another chapter where it's like a song. I don't, I don't remember, but I just, I love the writing style. I love the choices that she made for this book. And it truly makes me think of summer when I was reading this book. I felt like it's like a hot, sweaty summer day and you're out and you're getting up to stuff that you shouldn't be doing and you're getting into trouble and you're getting yelled at. <laughs> as you're a kid and yeah it's just like about friendship and the main character who we actually don't we don't know the main character's name uh she's just i think her name is poop her like closest friend just calls her shit and so for the whole entirety of the book her name is shit like that's just what her name is and i read it in august so it was like right at the end of summer and it was so perfect i'd like to give this one another reread this is actually translated from spanish so i want to try and listen to the audiobook version of this in spanish and see how that goes for me but if not i'll also just reread this one i thought it was really good okay so up next we have our wives under the sea by julia armfield and i feel like a lot of people are gonna have this on their list i've seen it on a lot of people's lists already but I think it deserves the hype. I don't know, I really loved this one so much and I can see why some people might not have liked it as much, but this was just so good to me. I loved the writing. There's scenes that just live in my brain forever and I think about a lot. After the book ended, I had questions, but I didn't care that I had questions. I really loved this book so much and I loved our main characters and learning about them. What this book is basically about, it's about a lesbian couple, Leah and Miri, and Miri is a marine biologist and she goes into a submarine expedition and she's gone something goes wrong while she's on the trip and it's about her coming back home and leah notices that something's wrong something's not right with her and she's trying to figure out and help her wife navigate that and yeah there's so many like themes within this book i just thought it was so well done it's a multiple perspective so we switch between miri's point of view where we get glimpses into like what happened while they were on the submarine and what was going on. And then we also get Leah's side of the story while she's looking back at their relationship and how they met while also talking about like noticing things about her wife that are different and what she's feeling and how she's going through dealing with the situation of not knowing what's going on with her wife. I don't know if this book would be for everyone, but it definitely worked really well for me. And I just loved it overall. Like I wasn't upset with anything in this book. Okay, the last book that's on my fiction favorites is How Not, how, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. 
cannot say this, How Not to Drown in a Glass of Water by Angie Cruz. This is my first book I've ever read by Angie Cruz. This book was so freaking good. I listened to it on audio while reading along, which is one of my favorite ways to read. It really helps me stay focused, but this book is just so good. I read this one towards the end of the year and I'm not a big crier, but this book definitely got me at the very end. There was like tears shedding. I wasn't like full out sobbing because I don't typically do that with books, but this was so good. If you like listening to audiobooks, definitely suggest listening to this on audio. It was so freaking good. We follow Cara Romero and she lives in New York. She just recently lost her job due to the recession and she's kind of trying to navigate that. She thought that this was her job. She was just going to have for life. She was set and now she's going to this company that helps you find new job placements and she has to meet with someone for 12 sessions. In those 12 sessions you learn more about Cara Romero's life. There's no like dialogue. It's just Cara Romero, she's telling you her life and it's really good. You get to learn more about her family and what it was like for her leaving uh, the Dominican Republic and what it's like for her and her, her little community and how they look after each other. And she's not perfect by any means. She definitely does not make the best decisions, but she makes the best decisions that she can. And she really tries, even though sometimes it doesn't work out in her favor. But I just really love this book. The main character, I just freaking love her and again if you enjoy listening to audiobooks I highly re recommend it because it's like a whole production. They did such a good job with it. This is another book that I really want to give a reread. I would give all of these a reread because they're my favorites so that's How Not to Drown in a Glass of Water. Okay so those are my fiction reads that I've chosen for my top five. Now we're going to dive into my non-fiction reads that I really loved. I don't have either of these books because I listened to one on audio and then the other I got from the library, so I don't have it. The first book on this list is The Undocumented Americans by Carla Cornejo. Carla Cornejo. Why am I so bad at names? Carla Cornejo Villa Vicencio. That took me forever to say. I really had to slow down. I love that book. I think it's a book that everyone should read and it hit close to home for me just because of my upbringing. So like I said, I don't typically cry over books, but this one it just hit close to home and yep it was a it was a tough one there was there's lots of tears shed over this book i really oh let me tell you what it's about i'm just like diving into my feelings about it but in the book carla retells several different undocumented americans stories so each chapter is someone else's story i really appreciated the care that she took with retelling everyone's story and you could tell that she really wanted to get it right and exactly how they wanted. Carla as an author like her writing is absolutely beautiful. There's a little bit of some magical realism in there which I honestly wasn't really expecting but it was just so good. I highly highly recommend it if it's something that you're interested in learning more of. I think everyone should read it. I wanted to share a quote from this book that oof, when I read it it just like really like got me. There are no clowns in the fields with machetes in America. There are white moms who threw stones at the little girls in Little Rock. And there are white moms who wish Andres and Omar and Elias and Greta's mom would be deported too. There are no clowns in the fields with machetes, but there are ice officers who pose as nice people trying to buy pinata off the internet, meet you in a parking lot, and detain you. <sighs> I was looking back to see some of the quotes that I saved for this one and it was like, ooh, ooh. I just feel like this is such a good book and if you haven't read it, bump it up onto your list. Okay, so my next and final nonfiction favorite is What My Bones Know by Stephanie Fu. I read this one right in December, so ended it off with this one and that book was just so good. Stephanie did a really great job with writing it. I feel like she was very vulnerable and shared a lot with us that she didn't really have to, but she did and I feel like a lot of people would really appreciate it. So with this one, Stephanie talks about her complex PTSD and what it was like for her finding out her diagnosis and dealing with that and also talking about her journey on healing from it and it's just such a like heavy book definitely check the, the content warnings for that one i think she did a really great job and she really takes like a deep dive into why some of the things happened with her family that did and what could have been the cause of it just looking back at history and what was going on in their lives and how that passed down through the generations and i just thought it was a really great memoir to read i think this is one that will stick with me for a while so the reason why I read this one is because I saw it on Libraries of Liz's 
Instagram story, they posted that this was one of their favorite reads and I immediately went to my library and requested it through Libby and it said it was gonna be a couple of months but it came in after like two weeks or so. So I was pumped, immediately started listening to it. I didn't fly through it because it was pretty heavy but I also didn't wanna stop listening because the, the writing was so good and also Stephanie Fu narrates it so it just like adds another level to it. So yeah, those are all my favorites that I picked for this top seven list. I hope there's some that you like and want to check out or some that are on here that are also your favorites. I'd love to know that. But yeah, that's that. So next up, let's dive into my 2023 reading goals. This is, I only have a few and one of the main ones is I want to make a huge dent on my physical TBR because I have so many books that are just hanging out on my shelves that I want to read. Like a lot of them I'm still interested in reading, but I haven't read them because I just keep buying books and then I don't, I don't get to them. So right now I'm not buying any books. I'm not going to say that I'm not going to buy any books for the rest of the year because if I want to buy a book. I'm not going to necessarily stop myself if it's a book I'm really interested in, but I'm going to reel it in. I'm not going to buy all the new books that I want. And I'm also going to try and use my library more. I also want to make sure that I'm still reading the books that I have on my shelves because it's very easy for me to send in a request to pick up however many books I want from the library and then still not get to my books on my shelves. So I like to balance it out. Use my public library and also read through some of my books. Another goal for this year is trying to read more books in Spanish. I'm currently reading one with Yvonne and Kat and I'm just hoping to continue that. I probably won't read like a ton of them but as long as I can like sprinkle in some books in Spanish I'd really like to do that because it's been a really long time since I've practiced reading Spanish so this is the year I think hopefully. Another goal is that I really want to read more backlist because there's so many books from authors that I've really enjoyed and I want to check out some of their other work but I get so overwhelmed with all of the new books that are coming out and I want to read them as soon as possible but sometimes I just want like I want to try and do maybe I'll do a series on here if it's interesting where I read two or three books from authors that I've really enjoyed like for example Julia Armfield I don't actually know how many books she has released, but I'd really love to read more from her. I think she has a, a short story collection that I'd really like to check out. And Miriam Toes, like I loved Fight Night so much that I just want to read like all of her books. So maybe I'll do like a little series on my channel. Let me know if that sounds interesting because I think that'd be kind of fun to do. Okay, and my next and final goal is just booktube. My main goal was to start booktube in 2023, so check to that but I really want to stay consistent and I'm not going to post every week because I don't think that's possible for me. I have a full-time job so whenever I'm editing it's usually after work and that just I can't <laughs> I can't imagine doing every week but my goal is to try and do every other week and maybe on some weeks where I have vacation or something maybe I'll post a little bit more but the main goal is every other week post consistently and yeah that's those are my goals. Those are the things that I'd hope to accomplish, nothing wild, but just a few little things I want to tackle. We'll see if next year, when I do a little check-in, if I did any of these. And yeah, leave a comment down below. Let me know what some of your favorite reads were of this year and what your 2023 reading goals are. Or if you're like, F it, I don't want to set any goals. That's cool too, let me know. But that's it, that's the video. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. If you want to continue and see more videos from me, feel free to subscribe. Thanks for hanging out and that's it. I'm done. Bye everyone. Yay.